This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Today, in the Cargo City Council faces ac accusations over Rugby Southland payments. University of Otago releases results from an electric car survey. And a Queenstown-based building company adds another award to its trophy cabinet. Good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. The Office of the Auditor General is accusing the Invercargill City Council's Director of Finance and Corporate Services, Dean Johnson, of a lack of transparency over payments to Rugby Southland. In a letter received by Council last week, the Auditor General's Office says councillors should have been told of a large increase in the amount to be paid to Rugby Southland. Sharon Rees reports. This is the letter sent by Jonathan Keat of the Office of the Auditor General to Invercargill City Council Chief Executive Richard King, dated the 25th of July. In it, Keat says the conditions set in a council resolution about a debt repayment to Rugby Southland were premature as they needed to be changed. And he said the changes should have been reported more transparently to councillors. The issue relates to the Invercargill City Council taking ownership of Rugby Park in 2015 as well as the debt owed by the Southland Outdoor Stadium Trust to Rugby Southland. In February 2015, City Councillors were told the debt totaled $740,000. However, the deed of settlement prepared by Director of Finance and Corporate Services Dean Johnston two months later had a figure of $880,000. The Auditor General's investigation resulted from the issue being raised by an anonymous ratepayer who questioned whether the ICC knowingly authorised the variations before entering the arrangement. City Councillor Karen Arnold said the ratepayer was right in doing so. I think what's frustrating is that they knew some information to have these concerns, whereas a councillor, I know that I didn't. The whole rugby park debate um, and process was driven really much from behind the scenes and in the shadows, I would say. The council approved the report at its meeting on 5 May 2015 and the public excluded part of that meeting. But Councillor Arnold said there should have been more discussion about the changes. I think the quality of information we were getting at the time was incomplete and I think the motivation for um, just sorting out this whole rugby park debacle, as I would have called it, um, I think the motivations were always wrong. She said she believes the culture of the City Council has changed since the acquisition of Rugby Park. Both King and Johnston were unavailable for comment today. I'm Sharon Rees for The South Today. There has been a significant drop in house sales over in Dunedin over the last two months. The medium sale price is at a record high of $360,000 with the medium time of a house being on the market just 25 days. NID Realty said the number of listings was the last they had seen. The agency also said that the buyer activity is strong and an open home they held last weekend attracted 46 groups of buyers. Less than 9% of the property NID Realty has sold over the last four months was to people moving to Dunedin from elsewhere. The total value of real estate sales for Dunedin in July has been $60 million. The results of a recent survey pioneered by the University of Otago regarding electric cars has been released. Flip the Fleet, a citizen science collaboration of over 200 New Zealand electric vehicle owners, has shown most of the drivers don't experience range anxiety, the fear of getting stranded with a flat battery. Imagine never having to pay for petrol again, but instead driving off was as easy as flipping a switch. That's a reality for these owners of electric vehicles. So we're trying to turn electric vehicle owners into a sort of an army of citizen scientists and uh, sharing their knowledge with the rest of the community. Otago University's Professor Henrik Moller has pioneered a recent poll of electric car users. He says the results found 72% of all respondents were unconcerned about their battery going flat mid-trip. It's something you get over quickly. It's more in the minds and uh, our perception of the people who haven't yet bought an electric vehicle. 
So uh, we found the majority of the experienced owners were um, quite relaxed about it. Uh, it's very unlikely they'll ever get stranded. Car owner Pam McKinley converted Moller to electric vehicles. She says forward planning is key for the uptake of electric vehicles in Dunedin. Hundreds of mums and dads driving their kids to the Edgar Centre and then dropping their kids back everywhere. So actually just all those school trips, dropping off all the sports teams and things, you save so much on, um, your, on your gas bill. Um, so we probably save about $3,000 a year in petrol. And about 40% of your greenhouse gases come from moving transport. So if we can actually hit the private fleet, in particular, we will drastically reduce, particularly Dunedin's emissions. There are enough fast charges in most parts of the country for long trips, but Moller and McKinley say 95% of charging happens at home and compare the experience to having your own private petrol station in your garage. Some of the barriers in the technology are financial. The cars will set you back around $20,000, but the pair hope this recent poll will go some way to challenging myths and misconceptions around going electric. Roselle Labone, The South Today. Otago Regional Council is hosting a series of public discussion ser sessions throughout Otago on the development of a plan change which is designed to provide certainty and flexibility when residual flows are set on surface water permits. The ORC Director of Policy Planning and Resource Management, Fraser McRae, says the ORC has listened to public feedback and is hosting sessions around the region to provide clarity about the purpose of developing this plan change and who may be affected. The 10 sessions begin in Tapanui at the West Otago Community Centre on Friday, August the 4th and conclude in middle March on Friday, August the 11th. A Queenstown-based building company has added another award to its trophy cabinet. As Guy Williams reports, the Lakes Building Company has won seven awards for two homes in Jacks Point in Queenstown at the recent Southern Region Registered Masters Builders Award dinner. Designed and built in Jacks Point, 20 minutes drive from Queenstown, this $1.9 million house makes the most of its alpine environment. It contains two living areas, two double bedrooms, each with their own ensuite bathrooms, a wine cellar, kitchen and dining room, and an outdoor lounge. It has underfloor heating, double glazed windows, and cedar cladding. It's a house that Lakes Building Director Stu Clark is proud of. Um, working with the colours, the copper spouting, I mean not many places have copper spouting and downpipes these days. The stone was very all hand picked, hand washed, and um, hand pointed, so that was a uh, very special Piece of, um, piece of work at the whole house and just the lay of the land, how the, the house laid on the land towards Jack's Point. He says rock from Glenorchy is an essential part of the house. Designed by Franklin based architect David Stringer, the house scooped a number of awards at the Southern Region Registered Master Builders Awards in July, taking out a Gold Award, Category Award and Craftsmanship Award in the new home $1 million to $2 million category. Basically, uh, you walk in the front door, you meet greeted with a bespoke set of doors that um, they were all handcrafted out of old Oregon beams that come out of a warehouse from Dunedin. Mm. The, the steel handles were handcrafted, and then you're met with a beautiful big stone wall. The house is intended to exude a lodge style luxury vibe with these imported spruce beams and handmade light bulbs. Clark's company has won 13 awards since 2012 and may be picked to join other 2017 winners around New Zealand in November to compete in Auckland at the National Master Builder House of the Year Awards. Guy Williams, The South Today. Still to come on The South Today, Dunedin residents asked to splash some cash and support for a new Mosgiel Aquatic Facility and we catch up with Lego enthusiasts at the Greg Gore Brick Event. <laughs> For all your news from the southern regions as it happens, go to our Facebook page. The South Today, connecting you with your community thanks to New Zealand On Air. Hi, welcome back to Alex Campbell Menswear. Check out our fantastic knitwear selection, 25% off. 
possum, merino possum, pure wool, wool mixes. Some of them are even New Zealand made, 25% off. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte, and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush, but the high-speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost felt as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now, 0800 502 402. Grandad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Grandad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf with him. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz from rare to the recent, visit the legendary hard to find for your quality secondhand books with the largest stock of New Zealand and a friendly book loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. We're a 25 Moro place at Dog with Tails Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focusing on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from around the world when you come here. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Tycho Valley Road. Visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on 488-5676. Jimmy's Pies and Dog with Two Tails Cafe proudly brings you highlights of the Dunedin Midwinter Carnival featuring the Octagon Lantern Parade this Sunday, 5pm. Welcome back. The team behind the bid to build a new aquatic facility in Mosgiel is asking Dunedin residents to splash some cash and support to make their plans a reality. About 100 people attended a meeting at Coronation Hall in Mosgiel last night about the progress of the bid. At the Torrey Communities Facility Trust, Chairwoman Irene Motsley revealed two possible concept plans for the new facility at the Silverstream Inn on Memorial Park. Both plans included a 25 metre by 25 metre lap pool, a 20 metre learn to swim pool, a hydrotherapy pool with a temperature of, of about 34 degrees Celsius, a walk-in leisure pool and a large spa pool. Project costs were estimated at $15 million. Lego enthusiasts congregated at the Gore Brick event during the weekend for the first time in two years. The Southern Lego Users Group, known as Lug South, hosted its third event in Gore at the James Cumming Wing. All in all, they're all just bricks in the wall. More than a thousand Lego enthusiasts flocked to the James Cumming Wing at the weekend in Gore to marvel at just what is possible with the world famous plastic brick toy. The group Lug South coordinates the event and Secretary Gavin Evans says it went very well. Yep, I think we've achieved exactly what we aimed to, those are the two aims we had for this event and they're certainly happening out there and really we wanted to do something that families could just say hey it's coming up to a stressful time for a lot of the Gore families involved in farming it's a real busy spring period usually and we're right before that starts and this way they can hopefully have a nice few hours out, enjoy something with the family and then go back to the busy, busy, busy lives that they've got. People were charged an entry fee which collected around $2,000 that Evan says is going to a local charity. One of our benefactors from this event is actually helping by taking the money on the front door and that's Jaden's helping hand which is a charitable trust run from Gore here 
and they help families all throughout Southland and South Otago. Um, their namesake doesn't actually benefit from it. Jaden is the, the naming person on the trust, but he actually um, doesn't benefit from the trust. His family work really hard for others in the community, and we find that so cool. The organisation runs similar events in Dunedin and Invercargill at different times of the year. He says what keeps him and the other volunteers going is seeing the enjoyment on the faces of people visiting and in some cases playing. We wanted to make sure that that was a focus of the show so when we were designing the layout of how much room we had for exhibitors we made sure that that was a focus and that was in the middle of the room. We then actually talked about and said well it's a wooden floor how do we compensate for the fact that kids probably won't enjoy playing with Lego on a wooden floor and one of the local carpet retailers was really amazing and came to the party. Gavin Evans says the weekend was enjoyed by many people from around the Gore and Matilda area. Nearing the close of the weekend Evan describes himself as tired but happy. Daryl Bazer, The South Today. After the break on the South today, the Sun made an appearance for the Rangiora Winter Festival on Saturday and Westland High School Principal Trevor Jones to be replaced after a no-confidence vote and Ashburton is treated to a West African drumming workshop. Channel 39 brings you a series of 45-minute documentaries looking at the future and the past. Wednesday nights at 7.30, repeating Friday nights at 8.30, only on Channel 39. Autumn is here. Too late to sow grassy, but never fear. Ready Lawn is here. Ready Lawn, your perfect all year round solution. Call Ready Lawn today. some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 4738252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. The University of Otago, an institute of world-class education and the social epicentre of the city, with outfits needed for more formal functions like the ball and for less formal functions like... The zoo? Are you sure? Yeah, trust me. Yeah, Dad, you'll definitely see me. I'm the one in the yellow and blue face paint and the onesie in the zoo. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush but the high speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost feel as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. Active Furnishers Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishes Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Hi, welcome back to Alex Campbell Men's Wear. Check out our fantastic knitwear selection. 25% off, possum, merino possum, pure wool, wool mixes. Some of them are even New Zealand made, 25% off. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Men's Wear, it fits. This week's documentary is Call Me Altman. How Nazi war criminal Klaus Barbie lived a life of freedom in South America before being caught and imprisoned. 
Wednesday 7.30, Friday 8.30. Welcome back. After recent wintry weather, the sun came out for the Rangiro Winter Festival on Saturday. Large crowds turned up to mark the second such celebration for Rangiora. Rudy Adrian has more. The Rangiora Winter Festival was first held last year to mark the revitalisation of the town centre following the 2010 and 2011 Canterbury earthquakes. Why Makariri Mayor David Ayres says the town centre is looking to the future after some challenging years. With all the rebuild post earthquake the uh, street's fantastic anyway and it's, it's really good to see um, so many people around today. The festival included a temporary ice rink, an ice sculpture competition, an animal farm and children's entertainment. The day's highlight was the annual Big Splash featuring 28 jumpers taking the plunge into a pool of cold water with Mayor Ayres being the oldest jumper of the day, and perhaps the coldest. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. Westland High School Principal Trevor Jones is to be replaced six months after teaching staff took a vote of no confidence in him. Ministry of Education Limited Statutory Manager Liz Clark says Jones has not been stood down but is on leave. In a short statement released recently, Liz Clark says employment matters are private. She says the school has two deputy principals, Linda Hart and Chris Manuel, and a relieving principal will be appointed to lead the school. Trevor Jones did not return phone calls to the Hokitika Guardian. Ash Burton was treated to a workshop on West African drumming on Sunday. Attendees were given the chance to learn under master drummer from Guana. Rudy Adrian has more. Coffee Fuga is based in Dunedin these days, but originally hails from Ghana. He said that drummers could often find playing rhythms to be infectious. The workshop covered drumming techniques, dance, as well as the cultural history behind West African drumming. We're going to learn a song when we come back, uh, so we can sing you know, the traditional song that goes with the rhythm, and a little bit of history behind the rhythm. Drumming is clearly a passion for Fuga, and he has been running workshops around New Zealand since moving over here three years ago. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on The South Today. The Office of the Auditor General is accusing the Invercargill City Council's Director of Finance and Corporate Services, Dean Johnson, of a lack of transparency over payments to Rugby Southland. The results of a recent survey pioneered by the University of Otago regarding electric cars has been released. And the Lakes Building Company has won seven awards for two homes in Jacks Point in Queenstown at the recent Southern Region Registered Master Builders Award Dinner. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Craig. Good evening. Yeah, we've uh, had a reporter and photographers up at Omaru today for uh, a meeting with farmers and uh, the Ministry of Primary Industries over the uh, the cow disease, Mycoplasma bovis. Um, two farms in, in South Canterbury have uh, been detected as having that disease in the last week or so. They've had to destroy 150 cows. Um, other farmers in the area are having their stock tested and, and I've lots of concern about whether they're going to have to lose their stock as well. Um, lots of frustration today from farmers, feeling they're not, there's not enough happening quickly enough for them. Um, they're a bit in limbo, uh, obviously some of them getting into calving shortly, not sure whether they're even going to have that stock alive in a week or so time. So uh, yeah, lots of anger and uh, that story is going to be developing over the next few days as some of these results continue to come out. Yeah. Uh, Royal Albatross Centre finally reopens tomorrow. Uh, it's been closed since uh, all the rain on, of uh, last month, uh, 21st and, and 20th. Um, huge slips down that way and they haven't been able to access the centre since then. Finally managed to get one lane of traffic open. Um, they're going to have to use temporary traffic lights over the next wee while to control traffic in the area. But some concerns that the road won't be cleared fully by the time the cruise ship season starts, which isn't too far away as well. Um, and of course unsure what sort of cost is going to be involved in clearing that road as well. So just part of a major problem around town with slips at the moment. Uh, we've got an exclusive in tomorrow's paper where we're going to be announcing the act for our next year's Gibston concert. Always a big day out there with lots of big performers have performed over the years. Um, can't say too much at the moment other than to say sure? fans <laughs> won't be disappointed. Okay. And uh, it's certainly worth clearing your diary for uh, January 20 next year. And, and finally on the sporting front, some concerns over the, uh, the wicket block at the University Oval for cricket there. Uh, New Zealand Cricket announced an A2 One Day Internationals in, in January and March next year. 
But um, a target cricket boss, Mike Coggins, got some real worries about the state of the ground at the moment. Um, Otago is due to play its first game in February, but uh, it's been used for rugby, and the wicket block hasn't, hasn't got a blade of grass on it at the moment, it's just a bog, so he's got some real worries there, and if we don't get a decent spring, they may have to look at transferring that match. So Not what we want in Dunedin. Certainly not. No. Lovely, thanks for that. Thank you. And now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Silverhorn Sportsville. Starting with today's southern view, taking off Dunedin from Stafford Street. Looking at the situation, a few more clear frosty days ahead for most parts, but some cloud about the east coast. The weekend will see a spell of mild and nor northerly weather arriving to the region. To the southern outlook, Balcolutha Gore and Lumsden, it's 8 degrees for you with light winds and clear skies. Cloudy for the Catlins with a temperature of 7. To the se central outlook, Alexandra and Tiano are 8 degrees. Queenstown and Wanaka shiver at a high of five. Clear skies for everyone over there though. To the northern outlook, Omaru and Tamaru have light winds, some cloud and eight degrees. Inland for Amarama and Twizel it's light winds, fine and seven. Here in Dunedin tonight, mostly cloudy with an overnight low of five degrees. Staying cloudy and chilly tomorrow with light northeasterly breezes, a high of seven and a low of five. It will be fine on Friday with sunny periods by, the, by day, but some low cloud at night with cold north easterlies, a high of 8 and a low of 4. And in the cargo tonight, it's clear skies, meaning a low of minus 2. You can expect Thursday to be fine and sunny with light winds and a high of 9 and lows of minus 1 or 2. That's our news for this Wednesday. For the latest news from the Southern Region, you can follow us on YouTube, Facebook and at channel39.co.nz. From the South team tonight, good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.